Good day folks, welcome to On the Bench at Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today I'm going to tie for you my San Juan Bunny. And um, this is a fly that I've been fishing around the lower mainland here um, since last fall I think I designed it. And I've been using it for cutthroat trout in the sloughs, the rivers, um, the ocean, and for rainbow trout in the lakes here recently. It's been very successful, so I thought I'd share it with you. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For a hook, I'm using a Mustad size 10 streamer hook, um, 2x long. For a bead, I'm using a 1 8 gold bead. For thread, I'm using olive thread in 12 aught. It's a Semperfly olive done. Any olive thread is fine. For the rib, I'm using fine chartreuse wire by Semperfly. You could use gold wire for this as well. For the tail and the hackle, I'm using um, hairline crosscut rabbit strips um, in olive. And for the underneath the tail and the body, I'm using um, the new Semper Flash blend in San Juan mix, it's called. It's got some various colors in it, like um, chartreuse and kind of a gunmetal blue color an orange, sort of a rusty orange color. Hang on, it's just having a vice issue there. I'm just going to start my thread. Take it back to the point where the barb would be. Now I'm going to bring it forward again. I'm going to start the tail right behind the bead here. And for the tail, I've taken about anywhere between 8 and 10 sort of um, pieces of the flash. I'm just going to snip them off even here. And tie them in on top. And wind it back to where I stopped my thread there. And um, I leave it quite short here, probably around three-quarters the length of the hook shank, maybe. Next, I'm going to take a piece of the olive um, rabbit, and I've just gone and cut a piece off the hide here. I'm just going to measure it out. So I, I like the tail coming just on top of the flash and just a little bit um, back, like behind it, back from it. A little bit longer is what I meant to say. I'm just going to snip that off and pull out some of this under fur, which helps it lay flatter on the um, hook shank. You may not think it makes much of a difference because there's not much that comes out, but it actually does. Same with marabou. It always helps if you do that. I'm just going to tie that on top. I'm going to make sure to cover all these butts up too. Um, I don't want them sticking out. You know, sometimes if you just go over top of them and they, they stick right out, um, they'll show through the flash on this fly if you do that, so make sure not to. Just cover them up really well. Bring that to the front. Next, I'm going to tie in my piece of olive rib here, or chartreuse. And the reason I chose it this color is because it's more used just to keep the fly durable and um, not so much for any color reason. So like I said, gold will probably go good, uh, good with this as well. It would probably just blend right in, if that's all you had. Bring my thread back to the front here. Next, I'm gonna take about three strands of the Semper Flash. Snip those off even here. Tie them in right at the front. Oh, I missed one. That's okay. You can just go back and go over top of it. And then just bring these to the back. Thread back forward. Next, I'm going to take the flash and I'm just going to wind it up the hook here, keeping it nice and flat, trying to cover all of the body. 
You can see the various colors starting to come through now. Sometimes you'll get a fly that's, you know, more of one color than the other, but it doesn't seem to matter. It's just an attractor. I used it quite a bit when the fry came in, and um, I'm going to try next year, I'm going to try tying a balanced version of this fly for um, cutthroat fishing. Just because, you know, that's how minnows swim. Um, this fly right now, I mean, you could tie it in a balanced version for sure for rainbows. It would work great, I'm sure. Um, but it's meant so that the, when the fish are looking up, they can see that flash underneath. So I'm just going to counterwind my rib here. Nice even spaces. Like I said, that's just for durability. Tie that off. And I'm just going to twist it off. I'm going to take my thread back a little ways here, um, probably about a bead length or so. And now I'm going to make my dubbing loop. So I'm just going to pull out a couple of inches here. Um, so it's about a couple inches long. It's not, well, it's not very long. And then just go around it a couple of times with my bobbin and then tie it back to the hook shank. And now I'm going to take my dubbing twister. I just have one of these um, like roto dubbing twisters spin and insert that in there. Keep my finger holding the thread and I'm just going to apply a little bit of wax here. Looks like a lot of wax, but I always take my finger and like um, run it over the thread so I don't get big globs of wax on it. I'm fairly new to this technique as well of um, doing a soft tackle with the dubbing loop and stuff. so. I like to apply the wax just so my rabbit holds in there a little bit better. So I've just taken, sorry I missed a step here, I've taken a, one of these small Stonfo clips and I've attached it to the hide and then I cut it off. And this seems to be about the right amount, this small clip. I'm just going to hold it with my fingers, keeping it in the loop. Oh, I missed there. You just hold that. Um, thread with your fingers tight, then it'll stay in. And now I'm just going to adjust the rabbit to where I want it um, because it's a bit long for the hackle still. I could have cut it at the hide the length I wanted, but I wanted to show you, you know, if, it, if it's too long after it's already in the loop, it's not too late, you can still cut it off. So I just adjusted it to where I want it. Now I'm just going to snip it um, next to the thread. You don't have to be exact or right up against it because the hackle is going to sit on that, um, those butt ends that I left out there. And now I'm just going to take my finger and spread it out a little bit so it's a little bit thinner and it doesn't bunch up on itself. And then just give it a little spin. Now I have a little brush here and I'm just going to brush it out and um, make sure I don't have too much of that hackle trap down. Brush out any loose ones. And what I like to do is take my hackle pliers and I just attach it to the thread here. And then chop my dubbing twister right out of there so I don't have to deal with that while I'm trying to wind the hackle on. It's too much. And then I'm just going to brush it back and wind it forward at the same time. You want to put one turn in front of the other. That's why I started with a bead length back. It's quite a big hackle. I don't like it to flatten out, you know, when it hits the water and it just flattens out against the body and it's not doing anything. This will make it really breathe nice. Once you've done that, you just tie it off. A couple turns in front here. Snip the thread out and you're good to go. I'm just going to wet my fingers here a little bit. Got rabbit all over me, just one sec. There. And then just pull that back. 
build a little collar. You could also, um, I haven't tried it yet, but you could tie this fly, I think, with an orange collar and do well with it as well. Like, I like to highlight a lot of my flies with the different colored collar and everything. And then just give it a whip finish. I have found when um, <clears throat> gluing this fly, it's best to glue the thread rather than try and get near the um, the rabbit for it seems to get in it every time if I do that. So for the second whip finish, I just glue, put some glue there on the thread. I'm just gonna run it over top. I usually always double whip finish my flies just in case one fails. Pull that nice and tight. Snip that off. And there you have it, the San Juan Bunny. So make sure you give that a try. Like and comment, subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying it. And um, take care everyone and tight lines. Thanks for joining me on this edition of On the Bench.